and Business Street Awards 2019. I would request all of you to come on the stage because you are going to start the proceedings. And those who are outside, please do come in. As we are about to begin, some of the most historical moments of the Indian pharma industry and what we are going to debate for the next four to five hours, followed by a very glittering award ceremony. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I am privileged to have with me Mr. Krishna Kumar Subramaniam, currently the Vice President of Business Development, India Formulations, Middle East and Africa. Mr. Krishna Kumar is a leading radio commentator and has spent a considerable time in the pharmaceutical development, pharmaceutical marketing. In fact, uh, other than the pharmaceutical field, he spends most of the times in various other activities and he holds world-class events, he moderates uh, world-class events outside and a much sought after speaker in the international and the domestic arena. He has hosted around a couple of World Cup matches as a radio commentator. During his stint in the pharmaceutical industry as being a senior most person in the industry, he has been responsible for various strategic mergers, acquisitions, and collaborations during his tenure, right from the days of Valcam until now in Glenmark Pharmaceuticals. Please give a huge round of applause for Mr. Krishna Kumar to take over. He is going to be the host for the Yapu for the entire program. And I'm very glad, Mr. Krishna Kumar, you have accepted my invitation despite you having a schedule. In Chennai, you have taken your time out. Thank you very much. Thank you, Satya, for the kind words, and thank you very much for this introduction. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, Satya and I, of course, date back almost 17 years now, and uh, it is one of those guys I can never say no to when he invites me across and says, can you be a host and uh, anchor and moderator, uh, given the relationship over the years. It's a pleasure to be amongst all of you and hosting and anchoring the Zemet for the afternoon and evening. As uh, you've just been told, we're going to have some thought-provoking discussions, debates, and panel discussions over the next three hours, followed by a very glittering Pharmaceutical Healthcare Leadership Award ceremony. Healthcare has always been a major focus area globally and is currently experiencing a lot of transformation in several ways. Newer developments in treatment methodologies, medical procedures, modern medicines, improved approaches in medical care, use of technology, digitalization, to name a few. We are here to stay with all of them, and we need to embrace them and brace it forward for the future. Medical institutions, organizations, and corporates who've stayed ahead of the curve and above the curve over the last few years have managed to do so because they've embraced all these aspects and more ahead of time and also ensured that the root of their operations depends on one word, and that is innovation. And that's why when Satya called me up a couple of months back and said, in this forum, we will focus on innovation, I said, wow, this is going to be something very special. We all know the story of the global telecom major who got phased out over a period of time. And the story is very well known. But the chief executive was later on asked, why was such a leading company in the world phased out? The answer was, well, we didn't do anything wrong, but we, do, we didn't do anything right either. 
what didn't they do right was they were not ahead of the curve. They were not bracing to the fast speed modern times. And that was a telecom company. Trust me on that. And the reason they got phased out, one of the important words is innovation. They could not keep pace with the global innovation in that space. And that's why, despite being a global major, over a period of time, they got phased out and ultimately got taken over. And that is what really tempted me over here. Beat modern medical approaches, modern medicines, focus on large molecules, NDDS, digitalization, modernization of uh, hospitals and corporate institutions. Everything across the board is going to be discussed right here today. And we've got an eminent panel of speakers and in the panel discussion to discuss all this and foray this forward over the next few hours. So then, as I said earlier, that forms a logical transition into the actual seminar conference and the awards presentation ceremony of this, the 12th annual Pharmaceutical Leadership Summit and Pharma Business Leadership Awards 2019. Welcome to this afternoon's seminar and conference and also welcome to the award presentation ceremony that follows later on in the evening. To get us started, we've got none other than Satya Brahma himself, who is very well known to all of you, doesn't really need any introduction. Satya Brahma is India's most respected and distinguished journalist, chairman and editor-in-chief of Network 7 Media. Satya is an industry expert and one of India's top journalists. Satya Brahma is also the author of Vision India. Satya holds a master's degree in political science with first class, first gold medalist from Bhairampur University and master's degree in journalism and mass communication. Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome Satya to deliver his welcome address. But before he comes to the days, we'll now be running an audiovisual of the perspective of healthcare in India and global. May we have the AV, please. स्वस्थ समाज का निर्माण करना है, तो हमें होलिस्टिक सोच के साथ काम करना है। साथियों आयुष्मान भारत योजना इसी सोच का परिणाम है तो आयुष्मान भारत ने गरीब से गरीब व्यक्ति को बेहतर स्वास्थ्य का विश्वास दिया प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी आई लुक फॉरवर्ड टू वर्किंग विद यू टू मेक आवर नेशंस इवन मोर प्रॉस्परस than ever before. इस बात का यहाँ पर मैं खोल उड़ाया कि ये इतना बड़ा रिफॉर्म कहाँ से हो गया? मैं अभी आपको फिर बताना चाहता हूँ कि जब इतिहास लिखा जाएगा, तो नेशनल मेडिकल कमीशन को नरेंद्र मोदी जी की सरकार के एक बड़े रिफॉर्म के रूप में देश में रिकॉर्ड किया जाएगा। और आज का दिन जब आप इसको बिल को पास करेंगे ये भी गोल्डन लेटर्स के अंदर लिखा जाएगा आज हो सकता है आप इसका मखौल उड़ा सकते हैं लेकिन भविष्य जो है उसके गर्भ में क्या है वो आप सब हम सब मिलकर देखेंगे Presently, our country seems to have slowed down somewhat. The rate of growth of GDP is declining. The investment rate is stagnant. Farmers are in distress. The banking system is facing a crisis. Unemployment is going up. We need a well-conceived national strategy to make India a five-trillion economy. 
a Congress government in 2019 is dramatically going to increase the amount of money we put into healthcare and education. We are not going to put money in ways that allow limited number of people to make massive amount of money. That is how I view the Ayushman Bharat scheme. जब से उन्होंने बोलना सीखा है और बोलना शुरू किया है मेरी खुशी का कोई पार नहीं 2009 में पता ही नहीं चलता था कि भाई इस पैकेट के अंदर क्या है पता ही नहीं चलता था अब पता चल रहा है कि भाई ये है ये नहीं Prime Minister of India can go and visit foreign countries and discuss about various issues, sign MOUs, discuss defence deals, discuss various other factors that actually come into the governance and the style of functioning in India. But has Prime Minister Modi missed the bus? Missed the bus? Missed the bus? Did he realise it is equally important that healthcare is the most important factor? So also the defence. Global healthcare is at the frontier of change. Health is serious business. Healthcare delayed is healthcare denied, and India needs to ensure affordable and accessible healthcare to all at all times. More than saving human lives, humanity needs to be saved in India. If every citizen of the country is considerate of this simple rule, all other perils of the healthcare ecosystem in India. shall slowly but surely be solved a big hello and welcome to the iconic and historical annual edition of pharma leaders 12th momentous year where the focus is on patient care and looking beyond the headline Against the above background, Pharma Leaders, nation's pioneer media in healthcare communications, with close to two decades of understanding the healthcare landscape in India, is organizing the most awaited and iconic 12th annual Pharma Leaders Summit and Awards 2019 under the theme Healthcare Innovations Beyond the Headlines. Pharma Leaders is an independent media house that voices the opinions of the key stakeholders of the country in an independent and unbiased way. We are unafraid and unmoved when it comes to truthful reporting as we feel we have a responsibility to tell the world the story as it is. We are independent. We are bold and restless. We are not there to please or displease the authorities. but to present facts based on our strong research and ground reporting addressing a high level meeting on universal health coverage in new york recently prime minister narendra modi said that his government having a clear focus on health has taken historic steps to ensure affordable health for all world welfare begins with people's welfare and health is an important component of it and in line with this global principle india is laying great emphasis on health said modi india has adopted a multi-sectoral approach towards the health sector the country is focusing on four main pillars of universal health these are preventive health affordable health care supply side interventions and mission mode intervention access to not just a disease free life but to a healthy life is the right of all people and for this the responsibility is on the government and social institutions to prepare and provide required services Ladies and gentlemen, known for championing the cause for healthcare innovations and raising serious discussions to pave way for a better healthcare 
by bringing together the finest brains of the healthcare industry under one roof, Pharma Leaders, today is India's most credible and prestigious title and a senior leader in healthcare communications. Backed by more than decades of experience while working with the stalwarts of the industry, Pharma Leaders has always preferred uniqueness of the subject that appeal to the nation and are first of its kind in contents due to our in-depth expertise, research and Pharma Leaders reputation over the years. Speaking on the healthcare, Satya Brahma, Chairman and Editor-in-Chief of Pharma Leaders, opines that even after seven decades of independence, it is unfortunate that health has remained an issue that isn't paid much attention to in India. The primary reason behind poor health profile of an average Indian is the abysmal public health scenario. Low and regressive public health investments in preventive, promotive and curative healthcare facilities have been plaguing India's public health sector for ages now. Ladies and gentlemen, Pharma Leaders is of the opinion that there are two sides to every coin. Low government expenditure is only one side of the problem. A greater problem that most certainly has a negative impact on the health scenario in India is the prevalent poor quality of public health facilities, especially primary health care, primary health centers and community health centers. Health inequalities is another critical factor here, stultifying the growth and progress made in the healthcare domain, if at all. Due to high relative income inequality and poverty, the poor have to depend on the inadequate public health facilities, vis a vis expensive private healthcare facilities in the country. This is not so straightforward since the poorest of the poor receive fewer benefits from the public health system than their better off counterparts. So in essence, the Indian healthcare sector grapples with twin issues, healthcare unaffordability and healthcare inequality. Thus the lack of reliable public healthcare services and the absence of health insurance further compel the poor to depend and spend heavily on the only alternative available, that is, private healthcare. This translates to the high proportion of out-of-pocket expenditure OPE, on health. High health care costs often lead people to delay treatment, aggravating health problems. Lastly, medical negligence, corruption and laxity on the part of a few medical professionals, staff workers and other personnel in the public health ecosystem must be brought to justice. The government must also be accountable. Politicians and ministers cannot just get away by launching inquiries, setting committees and condemning such careless acts in the medical field. There must be greater democratization of health issues via increased participation of medical doctors, citizens, media and the judiciary alike. Ladies and gentlemen, National Health Mission NHM is the Indian government's largest public health program. It consists of two submissions, National Rural Health Mission NRHM and National Urban Health Mission NUHM. The budget allocation for the NHM has been increased by 9.51% in the current fiscal year from rupees 30,129.61 crore in the budget estimate for financial year 2018-2019 to rupees 32,995 crore. However, we'll have a short uh, AV also on uh, Mr. Satya Brahma's perspective on the current healthcare scenario for about three, four minutes before he comes forward for his welcome address. Can we have that AV also, please? A 
A surge of external forces, new partnerships and a collective public outcry to fundamentally change healthcare's status quo aimed to force the relatively stagnant healthcare industry to adapt. I believe by definition, the disruptors in healthcare are probably little known to most of us today because we remain engrossed in headline management and fail to understand how healthcare delivery mechanism can be bettered. We are in an exciting phase of healthcare innovations. Believe that India needs disruptive innovator creating a new market, disrupting the status quo and displacing established incumbents and the rules of the realm. Mere cosmetic changes won't help. We need actions, bold reforms and sustained campaign to deliver healthcare to the rural India. Everybody can give lectures, but how do we do that? Meet Satya Brahma, the founder chairman of the Pharma Leaders Group, as Satya opines that healthcare in India has been in deep shambles and need deep introspection. Satya says that healthcare is a fundamental right, but it is not fundamentally right in India. The Supreme Court has held healthcare to be a fundamental right under Article 21 of the Constitution. However, Historical public spending of just over a percent of GDP on healthcare has ensured that the country's healthcare need has remained underserved and left for the private sector to service. The fundamental aspect of healthcare, primary healthcare, is in shambles. There is only one primary healthcare center, often manned by one doctor, for more than 51,000 people in the country. The World Bank estimates that 90% of all health needs can be met at the primary healthcare level. India has grossly underinvested in the area that should matter the most. Satya's perception on healthcare innovations point out the poor state of healthcare conditions in the country. India is at the crossroads with the government rolling out the biggest publicly funded healthcare plan in the world in healthcare, but at a time when universal health coverage has become the new buzzword of healthcare in India since Ayushman Bharat, the National Health Profile 2019 throws up sobering figures. Let's look at this. Between 2009-2010 and 2018-2019, India's public health spend as a percentage of GDP went up by just 0.16 percentage points from 1.12% to 1.28% of GDP and remains a far cry from the 2.5 GDP health spend that has been India's target for some years now. The cost of treatment has been on rise in India and it has led to iniquity in access to healthcare services. India spends only 1.28% of its GDP, 2017-2018, as public expenditure on health. Per capita public expenditure on health in nominal terms has gone up from Rs. 621 in 2009-10 to Rs. 1657 in 2017-18. Compare this with the average total medical expenditure per childbirth in a public hospital, rupees 1,587 in a rural area and rupees 2,117 in an urban area. Based on health survey, 71st round conducted by NSSO, average medical expenditure incurred during hospital stay during January 2013, June 2014 was rupees. 14,935 for rural and rupees 24,436 in urban India. Let's look at this closely as Satya says, we are comfortable with innovation, but we push hard against disruptors who dare to disturb our status quo. Innovations in the form of new drugs, devices, algorithms, processes and payment schemes are our standard fare. What we know for sure is the disruptors are busy building new businesses based on value propositions many incumbents think impractical or implausible. They are attracting investment from private equity, strategic investors, angel investors, venture capital and GoFundMe campaigns.
let's make a fresh beginning. We cannot afford to be silent spectators. In new India, there is a dire need to reverse this trend in every aspect of life, particularly the healthcare sector. Medical negligence and apathy, poor quality of healthcare services, lack of hospitals and the shortage of doctors and nurses, low hospital bed density, doctor to patient ratios are greater issues that need to be addressed. Let's build a strong India and a healthier India. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and welcome Mr. Satya Brahma for his welcome address and inaugural address in this, the 12th Annual Pharmaceutical Leadership Summit and Pharma Leadership Business Awards 2019 with the theme which we said earlier, Healthcare Innovations Beyond the Headlines. Satya, please, if you may. Thank you, KK, for your kind words. When I conceived this program of 12th Annual Pharmaceutical Leadership Summit, I thought of giving a headline, what could be the theme of this Congress? What we are going to debate about? And what are the most introspection that we need to do at a time when Narendra Modi government came in the year 2014 and in, through the last five years, what he has done? So I thought of not a better topic other than the headline management. See, what happens in India, it's a very peculiar country. In a nation with 1.53 billion people, we often get engrossed in the headlines. We don't try to go deep into the details and try to find out where we have missed the factors, actually. So, innovation is key. To me, if you ask me, unless and until healthcare access and affordability is not provided to the rural India. The very purpose of healthcare delivery mechanism in India is going to collapse. Despite the tall claims by the various ministers and the so many other persons in the authorities, I don't think uh, there has been a substantial change in terms of their narratives. There is no doubt, and I repeat I'm saying, there is no doubt on the intention of the present government under the visionary leadership of Narendra Modi. But beyond the hierarchy, so where it is happening actually, I often meet Dr. Harshbardhan, and I'm also on the advisory committee over there. And I, I do tell them that this is what has happened. You need to roll out these programs. You must monitor it. You must see it where it is heading. But the tragedy within India that in one day it is going to be NRC, in another day it is going to be citizenship bill, in third day it is going to be the Kashmir. So where the healthcare is all about, the ambitious program which Prime Minister Narendra Modi rolled out, the world's, the world's biggest program, Ayushman Bharat, which promised to give healthcare delivery to half a billion population in India. If you, if you minutely examine, if you minutely analyze, you will find it has actually not delivered. Through the findings which my team has done it, in almost all states and the union territories, we have found out that the real beneficiaries of this are not getting to them, actually. Many times it is surprising. Many private hospitals decline the patients to treat. And the, what the government is saying, government is saying that there should be a public-private partnership, and we need to bring out everybody's consensus. All the stakeholders should be in one platform, and debate, discuss, introspect, and implement. But in reality, what has happened? The public institution's mechanism in the country, I am saying with a full sense of responsibility, has collapsed. Except few like AIMS and others. You go to any rural India, you go to any parts of India, no PSC. None of the doctors willing to go to the remote areas. And none of them even take interest in going over there. Had there been a change in mindset of the government, to think something about the doctors, those who pass out. How many India has got a close to around 10 lakhs registered doctors? But 
do the governments are really serious about taking them actually are they giving that much of incentives to our doctors to pass out after struggling so many years of uh, studies ironically it is not the fact you need to give them an incentive you need to give them a message look we are with you look you are the one who are the ambassadors of health in india you are going to give the service which the government is going to do it neither the congress nor the bjp nor the any other government the failed and there is also a trust deficit between the federal structure of the country the central government thinks in one line the state government thinks in other line in other words if central government thinks that this has to be done there will be another mamta there will be another ysr there will be another kejriwal there will be another people opposing it why the opposite the opposite for the sake of opposing it actually and i want all the states to come together and sit with the central government irrespective of any political affiliation sit across the table discuss don't look at political brownie points it's not it's not good for the country it's not going to help you have ruined the country for the last uh, since independence in 47 it is high time that we must think about it and that is what my focus has been on healthcare innovations this is where india is going to come this is where india is going to go global this is where india is going to transform ladies and gentlemen it is not depends it is not anything else but healthcare is very key as you have seen in my slides 1.6 to 7% of healthcare spending what is this this is nothing actually how you are going to treat the patients actually there are no infrastructure available with them private hospitals are doing a brilliant job but they also need to be much more cautious in terms of affordable healthcare because many of the patients who come from outside they do not have that much money in their pockets but truly i think the trends are going to change and many have realized and the some of the doctors whom i have invited today who are also present here they actually have been very kind enough and they have told me in my interview and discussion that when they see a poor and weak and needy patients they don't charge them the way they charge actually in fact they tell the hospital management that this is what we are going to charge although they don't have the money this is a very good trend and this is what we are looking for actually so in the end what i am going to tell the key factor is the policy making process we are rolling out policies after policies now the national human commission has also come in into the picture now the government is planning to scrap indian medical association because of the nepotism and others but what are they going to replace it are they going to mca are they going to replace it with a finer mechanism which will give justice is a big question mark that will debate actually also we have to discuss about the ethics in healthcare how the country is progressing actually what should be the relationship between the doctors and the patients are the relationship between the doctors and patients going to be much more smoother and much more effective the way it is we need to discuss further actually do the ministers need to job there properly yes they need to do the job properly because they don't have to think about their board banks and constituencies and to win the election we have elected them to power it is their day time to jo- their, it is their job to deliver if they can't deliver they should vacate the seat actually and to me if you ask me i would like to conclude a fine india a healthier india is going to be possible through the merger of all the association and coming together of all the stakeholders that would make a real india and a healthier india thank you very much thank you shatya for setting the tone for this afternoon's discussions and deliberations